This is a 12 volt DC power supply, limited to 30, 30 amps, and I made it out of uh, junkyard parts. I have a microwave transformer, a couple of bridge rectifiers in parallel, and then a uh, resistor in series with the, the DC load. Now, this unit over here, this has a, a circuit breaker, a switch, uh, a GFI in there, and then I have a, um, this circuit here is in series with this light bulb here, and I use that to, uh, when I first test uh, these units to, uh, if there's a short or something, it, it, it won't, it only draws as much current as the uh, light bulb can handle there. So in other words, if I, I'm going to cover this up so you don't get a lot of light there. And uh, so I turn that on, and I don't know if you can see the, over here, I'm at, it's at 60 volts, and this light is half lit, and I have only uh, 4, 4.5 volts uh, coming out of the uh, uh, transformer there, or out of, out of the DC there. So uh, I'm going to um, plug this into the uh, 120 volt side here, and so I always just test it first to see if it's going gonna, it's gonna to work, going to fail, and have the light bulb in series with it. Now I have my transformer, I have it grounded here, uh, you know, that's important to do. And then how I did the transformers, I wound it with uh, 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 enameled uh, magnet wire, and I have two 14s parallel, so that's good for about 30 amps, and I have a, it's about one, one winding per volt, okay? And then I wound them tight, and then I, I put uh, enamel on them, okay? I dipped them in enamel, so this whole thing is, is sealed in enamel. So all the windings are, are together. If the transformer is humming, it's either the lam lamination is bad, it's it's apart, or your coil is actually loose and it's just vibrating a lot. So when I turn this one on, you'll see that it doesn't. Uh, there it is. Doesn't make a sound. It's all it's all solid. Okay. So that's what you want. You don't want it to be vibrating. Now I have uh, 0.35 amps on this this light bulb here, and I have 10 volts. Okay. So when you this type of a you know you see these all the time guys making up power supplies out of these transformers it's not regulated okay so here's a, now I'm going to leave a link to this and I, I had a video on it when you're converting a rectified AC to DC voltage you have to take into account the um, the ripple here okay the bigger the ripple the less voltage you're going to get out of there so if you add a capacitor to it it's going to reduce that ripple and the voltage is going to going to increase okay so I have a and a, I'll, the video will show you how to do the math for that so I've got 11 volts there now 10.8 volts coming out of the DC here and I'm going to add this uh, this capacitor here okay up to 17 volts okay so like I said it's not regulated it depends on your um, your capacitance and the load you have okay so that's a little bit too big so I'm gonna put it on about hundred and ten this one here is two uh, two two twenties in series and uh, there we go yeah it's 13 13 point three volts okay I'm happy with that that's all I got on there and of course your your amperage went up a little in 0.44 amps okay so I've got my uh, uh, transformer wound with the with uh, enamel uh, magnet wire, and I dipped it in enamel to uh, seal it all up. Doesn't doesn't make a sound. And now I have um, I'm going into a couple bridge rectifiers. Now, when you parallel dial, it's not recommended to parallel dials. If their full full forward voltage drop is different, and they're going to be different from diode to diode. Uh, the one with the lowest forward voltage drop will draw more current and cause an unbalance, and then, you know, they'll, they'll both burn up eventually. The diodes in a bridge rectifier are from the same batch and then they're on the same die, so it's easier to try to parallel those, okay? So what we're doing here, this is how we're hooking it up, and basically you're just taking this side and flipping it down to here, and it's going to look like that there. So these are 50 amp uh, diodes, and so I should be able to get 100 amps out, but I'm only going to limit it to to 30 amps, okay? So then I have uh, this back here. This is a, it's a resistor, and what I did to make that resistor, you can take, uh, you know, any diameter, any any uh, length of any length or any material, 
and you can find out the resistance to it, okay? So resistance is directly proportional to the uh, Pacific uh, resistance, K, and there's charts for that, tells you what, what uh, different materials are different resistance, uh, and it's directly proportional to its length, and it's inversely proportional to its area, okay? So here's the formula. Uh, the resistance is equal to your K factor times the length divided by the area in circular mills, okay? So the the length is going to be. We know what the we want. We want to have about 0.5 ohms on here to limit to uh, 30 amps, and then the I'm using number 16 wire here. This is number 16, and and I know the K factor. This is mild steel. This is a tie wire. It's a uh, you know like baling wire, a wire they use for uh, putting uh, tie and rebar together. It's a low carbon steel wire, and uh, it has a, a, a specific resistance of about. 85.8 and it's number 16 wire so I know the circular mills on that it's it's uh, 2583 and I know what my ohms is going to be I want to have 0.5 ohms okay so to kind of you know remember what the the uh, circular mills and uh, diameter is the uh, number 10 wire, number 10 AGW, American Wire Gauge, number 10 solid wire, has a diameter of approximately 0 0.01 inches, and that's 100 mils, okay? And then if you square the 100 mils to get your area, it's 10,000 circular mils for number 10 solid wire, okay? So in this case, I put the formula in there, that my 0.5, I put all my stuff, divided it out, and I, come, I need 13.5 feet of wire, okay? And... Uh, this is actually 13.5 feet of wire coiled up, and so I have, I have 13 volts, and I have uh, that should be about uh, 0.5 uh, ohms there. So I'm going to take this wire out of here, and I don't know if you can see that, okay, and then you can look at the uh, ammeter there. And I'm going to see what uh, oh, this fell off. Okay, put that back on. There we go. There we go. Well, I took the load off, and I have the capacitor on there so that the, uh, now I'm getting 20 volts out of there, okay? Let me take that capacitor off of there. Now I'm down to, so it's not regulated, so depending on your load and your and your capacitance, uh, you know, I'm going to put a load back on, so I'll put that back up to the, the 20 volts, and let's see what amperage we get if I, this, I'm just going to short the uh, power supply out through the, re, through the resistor there. 30, 29, 28, pretty good, and uh, I'm down to 9 volts, so I'm getting, uh, the, the thing's heating up, and the resistance is increasing so that the, the current will, will drop down, but, so I'm, I get a maximum, I should put a fan on it, I, I should, I'm going to enclose that into a, a container and put a, put a fan on it, but uh, I, I can't get any more than 30, and it's going to be less than that as it heats up. So, I've got my power supply and uh, limited to 30 volt, 30 amps, and of course here now it's, uh, it's a 20, 20 volts on there, and I take the capacitor off. I'm down to 11 volts. So, it's not regulated, and it depends on your load and your capacitance what you're going to have. And I have a, I'll leave the links to the uh, how to figure out the uh, the resistor and how to uh, parallel the diodes and how to calculate the uh, rectified AC voltage, okay? So, uh, yep, so it works. Um, and of course, I have it set up here so it's safe. I have a GFI and uh, this is all grounded. It, you know, you should ground your transformer also. And uh, so, very good. Now with no load on there, I have uh, uh, 11, 11 volts coming out. So very good. That's it. Uh, thank you.